Now we'll go over each individual, the tambour loop. It was given me with the CLA 76. I guess that's his go-to uh, compressor. Once again, as you can see, in this instance, he is truly using it and giving it a sound through the plugin. So if I took this plugin off and you can see how much it's taken away, it distinctively changes the sound. So I commit, I'm saying, you know what? This is what you wanted. Let me just try to make it better. So the first thing I thought of was the vibe of the record. And at the time, and I'll take these all off, show you how I got it. Don't even sound like the same one. It's very ticky. Very uh, poofy at the bottom, not really solid. So I just dirty it up a little bit with the lo-fi. I love this plugin. You know, you're adding the distortion and saturation that gives it the weight that it needs. Um, this was actually after the 1176, so I just brought it down before I brought the lo-fi, before I knew I was going to do anything else. He had a trim on it, so I just left it. I could have easily taken it off and just fixed it with the gain. Um, the Pro-Q2, you're taking a little bit of the low end off because obviously the 808 is taking or occupying all of that. And you're adding a little bit of what you need. Um, you know, that upper high mid that just lets that cut through. And then a noise suppressor, as you can see, which changes everything. You're like, why would you use the noise suppressor? You can't hear the difference between that and not. And some people use it, like, oh, let me take away the noise. I'm taking away the fidelity. I'm fucking this loop up. And if you can't tell the difference between this, it's a totally different song. As opposed to sometimes wrong is right. Sometimes you gotta make something not beautiful to understand how beautiful it is. I do it all the time. And last but not least, It's just a subtle off the top and a little bit of the woofiness every time the low conga hits. And obviously taking away some more of the high mids so that vocal can sit properly and then put a little bit of the attack back on. But you know, I always try to remove stuff so things can be on its own and separated. The bass has its frequency region. The loop has its frequency region, so on and so forth. And when they all work together, it absolutely sounds beautiful. So I'll go into the rough real quick, Dave, so you can see in that section exactly what I'm talking about. The claps are the claps, the loop is the loop. You're like, you hear everything in its position and no one's fighting against each other, but yet it doesn't sound too perfect. Let's go right back to the loop real quick. See this, Dave, I'll call it louder. Mm -hmm. Super simple. You see these four aux tracks that are connected to the drum track? So with these four, I'm making up what I'm losing by hitting the compression and the limiter and the, the black box super, super hard. First thing that goes to me when I ever do it is either low end, too much low end, but obviously we don't need to worry about that because we have the 808, but more importantly, the transients, which give you the life of the record. Overall, I added the transients back. I call it transformer. It's a decapitator with the drive, mid aggressive. The tone's a little bit dark because obviously we don't want to uh, overhype this record and taking a little bit of the high end off. I got my Dr. Dre preset on my uh, compressor. We call it cross-side. So you got the attack at 30, one is the release and a two to one ratio. And then I add the distortion back, which I love. I play with the mix all the time to find that sweet spot, but it usually pretty much stays the same. And then I take all of the low end out 
and just add back the transients, which is really, really important in the record. And then you'll see the difference. So that's with. And this is without. So you can see it just adds a very subtle top end of that spark. And you see the compressor, which is really important, taking about eight away, but obviously the tax at 30, so it's letting that transient sneak through. And then you're adding your harmonic distortion to it and letting it isolate by itself. So that's what I'm adding back. And then on this, I wanted to parallel the loop, which, you know, basically I just wanted to add weight to it. So here you have my MV2 low level enhancer. This one brings up your floor. This one takes down the top. And then I slowly, I'll start here, see it at 32, and I'll slowly add it back. As you can see, it's at zero. So basically it's the same thing. And I'll slowly bat it back in. You know, it's basically a front to back panner as well. And it just gives me a little bit without. Just puts it in attention. Like, oh, there it is. I love it. And then, last but not least, it's my attempt of emulating Fruity Loops and the distortion of Fruity Loops that that kick adds. And I call that Transformer 2 which is the capitator, same thing, the SSL compressor, same thing. The only thing that changes is I'm adding distortion from the Chandler and I'm opening it up a little bit more. I'm getting a little bit of the upper lower mids, if that even, before the kick right here. Nothing to identify it, it's just very round. And then this is with. So let me take the natural sound out, that's what I'm adding. And then you can get real aggressive with it. Like on hip hop records, I just wanted a subtle thing so it identifies itself through you know speakers that don't have that low end, but you can get real aggressive with it like most hip hop tracks that are done on Fruity Loops and go really, really, really aggressive. And I always use the gain from the makeup here. But here, obviously, you want to go subtle because the track is a very seductive record. So I just wanted to add a little personality to the kick. <laughs> 